What if I told you that there's only one tool you need to create eye-catching viral-worthy images and chances are you probably already own it? What if I told you that with this one tool you can create any type of image you need? What if I told you that you don't need an ounce of design experience to use this tool? What if I told you that tool is PowerPoint? Now you're probably wondering how a non-designer like yourself is supposed to create viral-worthy anything in a universally criticized presentation tool of all things, right? I know how you feel. In fact, just about every one of my friends and clients felt the exact same way when I first told them about this. See, until recently, solopreneurs and small business owners like us had two options for our image needs. A brutal learning curve and expensive, complicated software or stretching our virtually non-existent shoestring budget to hire a designer that rarely comes back with what we wanted in the first place. But a couple months ago, I figured out a simple way to use PowerPoint to create killer images that is 100% non-designer friendly. Images that look like they were made in Photoshop or Illustrator. Images that could pass for the same ones you're paying a designer for. So much so that those same skeptical non-designer friends and clients of mine have been able to create every single image they need all by themselves, and killer images at that. In fact, there were none of the frantic calls I expected, and there was none of the overwhelm or frustration boilovers I was worried about. No computers were harmed in the making of their images. To be honest, most of them called only to tell me how much fun they were actually having. These days, PowerPoint is the image editor I swear by, so much so that I haven't even opened my fancy, expensive Adobe software in months, and I'm a well-paid visual designer. These days, I'm one of the most sought-after PowerPoint design ninjas out there. In fact, I'm famous for teaching solopreneurs and small business owners like yourself all over the world how to tap into their inner armchair designer and create their own top-notch images and videos on the fly without, get this, an ounce of design experience and on a budget that's barely bigger than a piggy bank. But let's get real, I didn't start there. I wasn't born a ninja. The truth is, it wasn't until my sixth failed business venture, yeah, six, that I discovered my inner armchair designer and used those skills to rise from the ashes of one failure after another to become a wildly successful visual designer. So trust me, I know a thing or two about this design stuff. So look, one of the most important parts of creating a wildly successful online presence is branding and visual perception. In other words, clean, consistent, and well-designed visual content, whether that's images or video. This is how you can elevate your brand awareness, positioning, and ultimately your bank account. So that sounds great and all, but I bet you're still wondering how in the hell you could possibly do that in PowerPoint, right? As you might have guessed, there's a big secret to using PowerPoint as an image editor. And when I say big, I mean it. Most PowerPoint superstars don't have a clue about this Jedi trick. So that invaluable trick is exactly what I'm going to walk you step by step through in the next few minutes. So if you'll give me a couple of your valuable minutes, I'll give you the solution to your image creation needs. I'll get you well on your way to badass armchair designer status, and more importantly, off creating all those images you desperately need right now using just PowerPoint. All right, so before I show you the big secret to using PowerPoint as your image editor, there's something you need to understand. It's why most people mistakenly believe you can't use PowerPoint as an image editor, and that is, PowerPoint allows you to customize the size of your canvas or slide deck as it's often referred to, meaning you aren't stuck creating images that are the same size as that default slide size. You can actually customize the canvas to whatever size you need, but only in inches. So for instance, say you wanted to create an image for your blog that's 600 by 400 pixels. Well, PowerPoint won't allow that you only have the option of entering dimensions in inches. Ever heard the saying, when there's a will, there's a way? Well, this limitation isn't a deal breaker, it just means you need to use an image size calculator to convert the dimensions you have from pixels to inches. 
So just like a time zone converter would convert California time to Australian time, an image size calculator will convert pixels to inches. So my go-to calculator is courtesy of auctionrepair.com. All you need to do is enter the unit of measure you have in pixels, choose the resolution, which I would always go with a 75 DPI as a generic rule for any image you're using online, and bam, the tool will spit out the dimensions in inches that you need to create your custom canvas size. Then you can head back to PowerPoint, enter in those converted dimensions, and voila, you have your custom image canvas ready to rock and roll. Guess what we call that? PowerPoint myth number one, busted. So it's time to reveal that big secret I've been teasing you with. So the big, big Jedi trick that will allow you to create a high quality image in PowerPoint at the exact size you need is a macro. Now don't freak out, I know the word macro just feels like tech overwhelm, but I promise you it's really, really easy to create and I'm gonna show you exactly how and why right now. So if you're anything like me, you've probably heard of a macro before, but you don't know exactly what the hell it is or why you'd use one. And that's simple. A macro is just a shortcut to a task you do repeatedly. It's a way to automate a series of clicks. And you've used a macro hundreds, if not thousands of times, and you probably didn't even know it. For instance, the format painter in any Microsoft program is actually a macro. So let's say you want to change the color of your subheadlines in a Word doc. You could highlight the text that you want to color, then click the formatting tab, and when that menu drops down, click the color, then wait for that next pop-up where you can select that drop down in the color box, and then select the color you want to use, and click OK. Which, by my calculations, is six to seven clicks every time you need to do that. Or you do that the first time, then highlight each one after that and simply click that handy formatting painter. Huge time saver, right? Well, that's exactly what a macro is for. To automate a task, you need to do a lot or a task that requires several clicks. So we need to create a macro so that we can tell PowerPoint how to produce our image out at the size and format we want and exactly where we want that image saved on our computer and with what name we want it saved as. Then we'll be able to save our image exactly how we want it in one simple click. Pretty cool, right? So let me walk you through how incredibly easy it is to create this macro, and then I'll share with you the really, truly killer part of this macro. So to create that macro, go up to the Developers tab in PowerPoint, click on the Macros button, name your new macro, and here's a tip. You're not allowed to use any spaces or numbers. So I usually put an underscore anywhere I want to space. It's really a habit for my old days of coding websites, but it's a great habit to get in for you as well. And then just click create. Now we need to grab a chunk of code for our macro, which we'll customize in just a minute. Now don't get put off by needing code. All you have to do here is copy and paste and then change a couple lines. You don't need to write the code yourself. You don't have to memorize it. You really just need to copy and paste it. And don't worry because this code and everything I'm covering in this video, I've outlined for you in the workbook linked below this video. It's my free gift to you for generously giving me a piece of your day and letting me help you channel and hone your armchair designer skills. All right, so let's get back to this code. So we're gonna copy this macro code and paste that code between the two lines of code that are already there. Now we need to tweak the code for our specific image and there's three parts of this code we're going to need to update. The location we want our files saved to on our computer, the name we want our image saved as, and the size in pixels we want our image saved as. So let's tackle the location we want our image saved to. We want to replace the existing location, which is the circle portion right here, with the real location on our computer. So I personally find saving it to my desktop is the easiest option. It's easy to find and get to, and then I can move it to its final resting place or final file folder later on. So whether you choose your desktop or any other folder, to find the path to a folder, all you need to do is right click the folder you want to save to, select the properties option, and copy the location. Then you can come back into the macro screen and copy in that folder location to replace the existing location. Next, we need to add the image name, followed by the file type we want at the end of the file path we just copied in. 
And a side note here, I highly suggest you always use a .png for your file type as that has a transparent background, opposed to a JPEG which has a white background. If you save your images out of PowerPoint, or any editor for that matter, as a PNG, you can then put that on any colored, textured, or pattern background, and it won't have that nasty white box around it. Yeah, we've all seen that, and probably done that, but now you know. So to add the image name and the file type, all you need to do is add a backslash followed by your image name .png. So if I was creating a blog image, I would name it blog underscore image dot png. Now the last portion of this code we need to adjust is the final size we want our image saved as. Now remember, this is the image size in pixels, meaning that original size we put into the image size calculator to get this size in inches. So the example I used was 600 pixels by 400 pixels. So that's what I'll update my file to reflect. So I would change the dimension of the L width equals to 600 and the L height equals to 400. And that's all we need to do with the code. Now the last thing we need to do to create this macro is to run it, which will save all the coding that we just added. So to do that, just go up to the toolbar in PowerPoint, click run and select run subform user form. Now nothing's going to happen here on your screen. There's not any confirmation that the macro has been created, but as long as you run that macro, you're good to go. Now you can close both windows, which will bring you right back to your custom size slide canvas. Not too scary, right? I promise you after you do this a couple times, any coding fear is just really going to melt away. Now is as good a time as any to save your new PowerPoint template. So to do that, you're going to save it just like you would any other Microsoft document, but instead of saving your PowerPoint file as a PowerPoint presentation, you need to select PowerPoint macro enabled file. Save that bad boy and you, my friends, have a perfectly sized templatized PowerPoint file that you can now simply add another slide to and create your next image. But the real beauty in setting up this macro is that after you've created your first macro enabled PowerPoint file, you can always begin a new project by simply opening up that file, saving it as a new file, and then you don't have to create that macro or grab that code and copy it in. All you have to do is update the file name and pixel dimensions. And voila, you've created your second perfectly sized PowerPoint template that you can use to create one image after another at the exact size you need. See, it's all about system here, guys. It's never my goal to recreate the wheel. That always costs too much time and money. So I hope you're getting really excited about how much time and money this Jedi PowerPoint trick is going to save you on your image needs and how endless the possibilities really are for leveraging PowerPoint as your own powerful image creation tool. So now that I've proven to you that PowerPoint can be used as a powerful image editor, you're probably ready to dive in and get your palette wet. But don't leave me yet. Look, I know how overwhelming design can be to newbies and non-designer types. Remember, I wasn't born a design ninja either. So I don't want to give you enough rope to hang yourself. I want to give you everything you need to lasso your inner armchair designer so you can create the eye-catching viral-worthy images I've been talking so much about. Not just perfectly sized, high-quality nuggets of crap. No way, not on my watch. I'm here to champion you, my fellow armchair designer, and unite us to show the world that we don't need expensive degrees or complicated software to create amazing visual content. So tell you what, in two days, I'm going to deliver to your inbox another training video where I'll walk you through step by step my foolproof, straightforward, easy as hell to use 10 step image creation process. This is a process that took me months to perfect that I now religiously follow to create any image I need. It's the same process all my non-designer clients and friends, including my 64-year-old mom, use to create their images and hone and perfect their armchair designer status. It's a process that takes all the guesswork out and outlines each step to take and makes image creation simple and fun. Yes, please, right? So keep an eye out for that in your inbox in two days. But for now, I'd love to hear your feedback on all this PowerPoint armchair designer stuff. So in the comments section below, let me know if you're ready to grab image creation by the you know what and transform into a powerful armchair designer, or if you're still skeptical and looking for that fine print. 
Let me know if you have any fears that are or have been holding you back from creating your own visual content. Let me know and I'll help any way I can, guys. So once again, a giant thank you to you, really, truly, for generously giving me a piece of your day and letting me guide you on your PowerPoint designer journey. You've got this and I've got your back. Now, get out of here, go enjoy your day or evening, and I'll see you in two days. Cheers.